What's up, everybody? Welcome into Capping the Card. My name is Colin Sheehan. We're going to go through all seven race, races at Assiniboia Downs for Tuesday, September 12th in about 20 minutes. So stay tuned. That's right. That's an important note to uh, keep track of is that we are moving our live Assiniboia Downs show from Monday nights to Tuesday nights, so we don't have to compete with NFL. We know a lot of you are football fans. We'll be watching on Monday nights. So we're going to move our coverage for Cinnaboya Downs to Tuesdays, and that is why capping the card this week is for September 12th up at Cinnaboya Downs. My name is Colin Sheen. We do this show every week, bringing you coverage for Cinnaboya Downs, where we go through every single race and give you a top pick and a value play for those of you that play stable duel. Hopefully this is a tool that can help you find some of those longer priced horses that you can save some money on in your stable. Check it out at stable duel uh, in the app store. They've made some recent changes to the gameplay. There's plenty of free games to jump in on and you can join us in our live streams on Tuesday night as we both talk through stable duel and also do some live handicapping and betting. There's a great community out there. Come join us in the chat and say hello. This show is for Tuesday, September 12th. We have seven races up at Assiniboia Downs, and we are going to kick it off with race number one is a maiden claimer for $5,000, going five and a half furlongs for three-year-olds and up. The key to this race is what to do with number one, big, big energy. This horse has raced 11 times and has finished fifth pla uh, finished second place five times and third place five times. That's 10 for 11 in the money, which is great for stable duel, but morning line four to five here in race one on Tuesday night. The tough part for me here is taking that type of price for big, big energy, your number one, who just doesn't like to pass horses. Uh, a lot of times gets there in the stretch and just doesn't have the will to kind of get home. And for me, that's a tough price to take. Now, of course, the speed figure numbers here going by Brisnet certainly are above the rest of the field here. So that's probably a, a big part of your four to five morning line. It's also taking a drop as last time was in a maiden claimer for 9,300. Prior to that was racing at the maiden claiming 7,500 level. They're also cutting this horse back in distance. The last couple of races have been run at six furlongs or seven and a half furlongs, but I don't know that there's been a ton of early enough speed here from big, big energy to give me any confidence in making the choice there. So I've decided to go with my top pick all the way to the outside with number six no barb wire. And a little bit of this for me is what we haven't yet seen from no barb wire. This horse has only raced twice. And the last time out did show some early speed going six furlongs. That was in a maiden claimer four five K. So at this level, uh, at the second call was in second place, only two lengths behind ended up finishing third that day. Uh, there was a nice progression from the first start to the second start, uh, a 38, speed figure in the first race, jumping up to a 51. So there's some really good progression there. Another step forward, I think No Barb Wire is a horse that you can certainly be interested in. Number five, Jackie's Thunder. This is a horse that has just continued to be behind that horse that we talked about, Big Big Energy. So for me, it was really hard to be interested in Jackie's Thunder, who just continuously finishes behind big, big energy. I think in that instance, I'd take big, big energy over Jackie's thunder and sort of a heads up thing. But if we're looking for a value play, I'm going to go with the two freedom convoy, a horse that's also lightly raced only has three races, uh, gets the bug aboard and Fraser ably. So has a little bit of a weight, uh, allowance compared to the others. And in the first race and in the last race, this horse showed some early speed and gets the brisnet a designation of an E7. And sometimes at this maiden claimer, really low level, horses that just get out in the front uh, are able to wire a field. So the two Freedom Convoy is going to be my eight to one value play. And then for Stable Duel, when you only have six horses in a race, 
this might not be a bad shot to use a horse like Freedom Convoy. Uh, you could also look at Four Helen Spirit. This horse had been running a lot better last year and just hasn't put it together this year. Uh, really low trainer and jockey percentages make it hard. But for 20 to 1, when you only have six horses in a race, and not a bad shot to take and maybe hopefully get a couple points, uh, you don't have to worry about losing negative points in Stable Duel anymore. On to race two, we have another claiming $5,000 non-winners of two lifetime level. Uh, and the horse here, Miami Souvenirs, number four, is a horse that I am just been totally against this year. Uh, this horse to me is one that I, when I see it in the race, I usually have a sense that I'm going to have a hard time, uh, liking any of the other horses in the race. But we, what we ended up doing here was going all the way to the outside with number six, a lot to like, I don't know if there is a totally a lot to like the field's a little underwhelming. Your favorite is the number one on the inside at eight to five true Kate, a lot to like for me. Not really crazy about this pick. You do get the bug jockey aboard again. Last year, though, in September, if you look at that September 19th race and all, also the August 30th race with his horse won by six lengths, those were races that were later in the year. This horse has started to show a little bit of progression, at least looking at the last two, certainly not from looking at a uh, finished or lengths behind standpoint, but at least from a speed figure standpoint. You're dropping down here as well. Horse has been running at the $18,000, then $12,000, then $6,200 level. I'm hoping that a little bit of what you saw last year when a lot to like ran better later in the year is what we're going to get from a lot to like. So I'll make a lot to like my top pick. As far as my value pick, I like a 15 to 1 shot here with the Mario Benoa board, who's been uh, very strong with uh has been very strong this year and i actually really like this angle here so fingertip would be a horse that i'd certainly use in my stable duel and that is that look at the speeds and especially the early uh times of fingertips last four races i don't think that fingertip is going to have to deal with as fast of a pace that he's had to or she's had to deal with in the last four races so i'll perhaps fingertip can get out front and just end up wiring this field of what I consider to be a little bit underwhelming talent. So your three fingertip with that early speed and hopefully getting a little bit of a break in comparison to what has transpired in the last couple of races will give this horse an opportunity. It has a couple of speed figures mixed in there, kind of does this little bit of a every other pattern for fingertip. But you got a 64 and a 60 going by Brisnet. They figure this pace is going to be about a 65. Um, so fingertip is a horse that I think you can take a shot with at 15 to 1. Race 3 is an interesting race because it's a mile and an eighth, a distance that you really don't see up at Assiniboia Downs. It's the Swifton Stakes for three-year-olds. That distance obviously will come into play. You definitely have to worry about the number five here. I love my life. Seven to five with Antonio Whitehall aboard. This horse uh, finished second at a mile last time out. Speed figures in the past have certainly put this horse in the company. But for me, I'm going to go with the one Private Frank. Is four to five morning line favorite. The last race finished six by 56 lengths. But if you cross out that late, cross out that race, source is four for four this year up at Assiniboia Downs, four for six lifetime. And those were some pretty uh, impressive victories at the allowance level and stakes level for Private Frank. I think the figs really stand out enough that you can probably rely on Private Frank. Um, my value pick is going to go with number three, Sugar Daddy Jack at 12 to 1. Um, it might be a two-horse race between the two previously mentioned horses. If you're going to take a shot with one of the longer ones, uh, a little bit of a trainer angle here. You're getting Carl Anderson first off the claim, and you have a couple instances that he does really well off of. You have a horse that they're putting in here going from a sprint-sprint route. That's an angle that Carl Anderson hits at 43% off. He's 29% first off the claim. And going from a sprinter route, 
uh, 38%, hits at 40% in the non-graded stakes level. So I'll take a little bit of a shot with the trainer angle here with Sugar Daddy Jack at 12 to 1. But from a stable duel standpoint, I'm not necessarily sure that this horse will make into my stable, uh, only because I would be worried that the 1 and the 5 might be your keys to the exacta. Race number four, we go back to claiming $5,000 level, uh, going five and a half furlongs for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares. This race has a ton of early speed. If you use the Brisnet designations, you got two horses with an E8 and an E7, including Stan Starlet, uh, Takate Gold, Miss Langship, and Tipsy at the bar. So for me, when I went through this the first time, and I saw those designations that immediately triggers to me to want to look at the horses that are going to be coming from off the pace, maybe some of those horses with the P or the S designation. And in this race, there's actually only one horse with the P designation, and that is Dazzling Gold, who uh, gets Chavian Chow with Michael Nault. Those connections, as we know up at Assiniboia Downs, are very strong. And uh, Michael Nault's really strong at this sprint, hitting at 20 seven percent so both from a pace standpoint and Nalt's connections with chow and doing well at the sprint i'm going to take a shot with dazzling gold hopefully you get a nice uh, pace battle up front and dazzling gold will be the horse that comes late to pick up the pieces out of the speed i'm going to try and use stan starlet uh this horse going off at 15 to 1 for wendy anderson again you get the bug jockey aboard so you get a little bit of a weight break um, and this horse has shown uh, that ability to get up front. Now, the problem with Stan Starlet, of course, is going to be the competition for that early speed. Um, but of the early speed, I think I'll take a shot with this 15 to 1 shot here. Race 5 is an optional claimer. 10,000 going 7 furlongs for 3-year-olds and up fillies and mares. And we're going to jump right to the horse that I have decided to go with both my top pick and my value play. Your favorite here, Kate's Princess, is a horse I certainly uh, respect. Kate's Princess has done really well this year. Three victories out of seven races. Also has done well at Assiniboia Downs Lifetime. 19 races with eight victories. The question here for me was you got a race for Kate's Princess going seven furlongs. Kate's Princess has been successful really at the six furlong level, some five and a half furlong victories as well. The speed figures are certainly respectable, but if you're going to take a shot against a six to five shot, that is where it's going to be. And that's my angle is the fact that this horse is now going to try and go seven furlongs. She has tried it once and has a third number eight blazing sky. I thought it was interesting that this horse was not in for the claim. So that was something that I pay attention to. Remember, this is an optional claimer. And both times that Blazing Sky has actually been in for the tag, the horse has been claimed out of those races. So obviously, the horse uh, has shown the interest of multiple trainers. Devon Giddens is the new trainer now with Ronaldo Cumberbatch aboard. Uh, this horse has been improving this year. Uh, I know the results haven't been there from a victory standpoint. Has raced five times, has two seconds and a third. Uh, but the other thing to keep in mind is that Blazing Sevens has been running at the seven furlong and seven and a half furlong distance, including that last time out where it put up a 78 Brisnet speed figure. Going back to last year, this horse had put up an 82 when it had won three victories in a row up at Woodbine. Uh, I'm thinking Blazing Sky is a really good pick in here, and that's why I'm going to choose to go with Blazing Sky as both my top pick and my value play for race five. Race six is a claiming $5,000 level non-winners of two lifetime, five and a half furlongs, three-year-olds and up. And the interesting thing about race six and seven, if you like those daily doubles, you have some really big fields here in the last two races. I think you have quite a bit of early speed again here in race six. And the interesting horse for me, uh, well, on top first, we'll go with Call the Cops. This horse has been racing at the allowance level. Uh, last time out was at the claiming 12,000 level. 
26 races, only two victories certainly does not get the blood pumping, but out of the early speed, I think that this horse is the fastest going five and a half furlongs. Uh, of course is getting a little bit of a cutback from the six furlong races where he's been running at this year. Uh, and that's going to be the same angle I'm going to use on number eight as well. Number eight, Asta La Vista, honey, has raced 24 times with only one victory, an angle that I'm really not uh, keen on, but I'm using that early speed. And I think Asta La Vista is the speed of the speed. And when has been racing at seven furlongs, now cutting all the way back to five and a half furlongs, getting it five to one with Antonia Whitehall aboard. That's too good to be true for me. Uh, I think the rest of the horses here are a little bit underwhelming. Nothing really stood out to me as someone to be really too scared about. And so that's where we'll land in race six. On to the nightcap race seven, claiming 4,000, going seven and a half furlongs for three-year-olds and up. Again, you have a field of 10, as I mentioned, two big fields here in the last one. Uh, we'll start with my value play, who's the one on the inside. Value play has raced 24 times on the turf, four victories, two seconds, and two thirds. Only has raced three times on the dirt. The last two races were up at Assiniboia Downs on the dirt. There was a little bit of uh, progression as far as the speed figures are concerned. But I, what I saw last time was the horses that It's a Boy was running against. Great Admiral, Giant Oak. These are some of the best ones up at Assiniboia Downs. So a sixth place finish only eighth lengths behind in that race going a mile to me wasn't as bad as what you see from a sixth place standpoint. This is a gamble for sure. You're hoping that it's a boy uh, has now gotten a little bit more comfortable on the dirt. You're getting the bug jockey again. We've talked about that many times throughout tonight's card as hopefully we can take advantage of that. Not an angle that I usually play uh, a lot, uh, but in this instance, uh, hopefully it helps us out. This horse has been running at the optional $10,000 level in the dirt. So this drop down to the claiming 4,000 level, I think is bigger than maybe what it seems on paper. So that's why I have it's a boy at 20 to one as a value play. And it's a gamble. Like I said, this horse has been really successful on the turf. Don't know if it's going to like the dirt as much. But I, again, I don't know that there's a ton in here to be as scared about. Number nine out on Saturday is actually where I end up going for my on-top pick. If you go to AssiniboyDowns.com, they have the player portal, and you can get the charting horse value charts for free. And on the charts in this race, it gives the nine out on Saturday an A+. What I saw was the back class on number nine. Going back to last year, this horse was putting up Brisnet figures in the 80s which is certainly uh, better than a lot of the horses have done here uh, in this field. This year hasn't been able to break that 80 barrier, but started with the 65, 73, 79. That's a great progression to see. So if this horse can move forward and get back to what uh, on Saturday was doing last year with a very capable Antonio Whitehall aboard, I think you have a pretty, uh, good shot here with out on Saturday. So out on Saturday at nine to two will be my top pick with it's a boy as my 20 to one value play. It's a boy is a horse. I'm definitely going to take a shot in it. My stable duel, hopefully that maybe I'm a little bit unique from the rest of the players out there. There you go. That's it through 20 minutes. We get you through all seven races at a boy downs. I'd love to hear angles that you like horses that you like, who are some value plays that you have for Tuesday. I also just, if you're not necessarily looking at Tuesday specifically, would love to hear uh, value angles that you're looking for. Some of those longer shots and what are some angles that you use in order to weed them out and put them in either your stable duel or play them paramutually. Please like and subscribe here on Trust the Profits. Plenty of content coming at you. Please join us Tuesday night for our live stream. And until next time, my name is Colin Sheehan. Thanks for watching.